Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Alex and in this video, I'm going to show you how to trade bank earnings tomorrow. Okay, so if you didn't know, we've got four major banks reporting earnings. That's going to be the top row there, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, PNC, and Citigroup. And then we're also going to keep an eye on Goldman Sachs and Bank of America because what you'll find with banks when they report earnings is as soon as the major banks report, all the banks are pretty much going to trade in unison or very similarly. And so that's why even though Goldman Sachs and Bank of America aren't reporting earnings, they're still going to follow the lead of what these four are doing uh, typically. Okay, so look, I know we've got a lot of new options traders here who some probably don't even know the tickers of some of these bank stocks. So I made sure to put it in a nice little graphic for you so you can screenshot that if you want. This is going to help you keep tabs on the bank stocks we're actually watching tomorrow. And then once again, uh, keep in mind that the top four here, the top row, is the ones that are actually reporting earnings tomorrow. Okay, so um, now that you've got your screenshot out of the way and you know which bank stocks we're going to watch for tomorrow, we can pretty much get started, but before we do, make sure you watch the video all the way through so you don't miss out on an important detail that could literally make the difference between you walking away tomorrow with $5,000 in profit or losing $2,500, guys. It's important. You listen closely, pay attention, and we're going to get started. So, look, the first thing we want to go over is some data we've collected here from the previous earnings reaction, which you'll notice is that all bank stocks dropped after the last earnings report which happened here on 1013 now not all of these reported on 1013 but the fact is that once the major ones report then the, all the other ones follow right so that's where the big move happens is the first day that banks report earnings and then what you also have here is the DTR on these moves so you'll see JPM had a three-point DTR right Goldman Sachs had a five-point DTR right so it's important that that you actually have some numbers on your side some statistics some calculations you've done in advance to help prepare you for your trade so that's what we've got here you can screenshot that as well that should be another good little graphic for you to keep in mind when it comes to picking which bank stock do you want to trade okay so look which is our favorite bank stock to short then based off this graphic we went over it's going to be Citigroup or PNC Bank okay and so I'm going to explain this in more detail as we go along here um, but pretty much you can see here Citigroup dropped 4.7 percent and PNC dropped about 3 percent okay so that's what's so attractive about these two stocks but we also believe that they're the weakest in the pack and you know this is a very common sense question but do you want to be shorting the strongest stock or do you want to be shorting the weakest stock clearly you want to be shorting the weakest stock so that's why we've um, you know favored these um, out of these five bank stocks and then when you look at the DTR Citigroup had a 2.5 DTR which is not that big okay but you just got to realize that 2.5 yeah, it might not seem very large, but it's still a 4.7% drop. And what's so important about the 4.7% drop is it clearly signifies it's sticking out like a middle finger there that, hey, Citigroup is by far the weakest stock here. There's a reason it dropped harder than the other ones. And so we want to take advantage of that when we're choosing which stock to short. Now, moving into PNC and why we like this one is because it had a 4.1 DTR, which is very, very profitable on a Friday, right? Okay, so guys, I just want to show you what this actually looked like on the chart last time they reported earnings PNC you can see drops from 115 down to 111 in one day which remember guys we're trading on a Friday zero days till expiration that's gonna put you four dollars in the money if you got in at 115 right um, so it's super profitable even though it might seem like a low DTR move same with Citigroup okay take a look at Citigroup here you know it drops from 45 and a half down to 43 once again it doesn't seem like a large move but it really is okay so just keep that in mind as we move along here. Okay, but guys, just realize there is no right answer here necessarily. Um, only time will tell which one is the best bank stock to short, right? But we can go off previous data, and previous data does show us that Citigroup dropped the hardest when it comes to these bank stocks. So that's why we prefer it this time around. But now, guys, we're going to do something super, super important, which is actually compare the earnings growth between these bank stocks. Okay, so take a look at this. PNC, you see, it's back up to its pre-COVID levels. Okay, so they have recovered fine, but take a look at Citigroup, okay? Citigroup's earnings is down to a dollar per share, whereas it was two dollars um, pre-COVID, right? So they are struggling. They are not back up to the pre-COVID levels, and that is a further confirmation that City uh, Citigroup is the weakest bank stock we have here. Take a look at Goldman Sachs, okay? They're actually accelerating, and they're much 
higher than they were pre-COVID, right? So that's just further confirmation that we don't want to short Goldman Sachs. Why? Because that's the strongest bank stock we have here by far, okay? And then JPM, you take a look at them. They're back up to the pre-COVID level, so it's kind of tied with PNC, right? Okay, so ultimately we pick to short PNC over JPM, even though they're relatively the same strength. Why? Well, because remember, PNC had a higher DTR, which means it's going to pay you more on that move down. Okay, so that's why we would prefer PNC over JPM, and that's why we prefer these two overall. So let's keep it moving here. All right. Okay. And my bad if I'm giving you too much information. Um, you know, I don't mean to overwhelm you, but if at any point you got any questions, you can leave them down in the comments and I'll be glad to answer that. But take a look at this. Let's now get into something much more simple to observe. And that's going to be the question of what has actually happened to banks so far this earnings season. Well, take a look at this guys. BLK drops like a black rock and then you take a look at frc another bank first republic bank and actually drops from 167 down to 157 so 10 point dtr so far two for two of the bank stocks that have reported earnings this week have dropped very hard and so we should continue to ride that momentum of this institutional selling during this quarter of earnings right um and so look we're about to take a look at the charts go into detail on that but look i mean it's pretty evident so far they're selling out of the bank stocks so we're going to continue selling as well and then i'm actually going to give you a tip here when it comes to trading these options okay so it's super easy to get overwhelmed by everything that's going on but if you make the extra effort to pay attention to the little things, it's going to really make a big difference in your trading. So, for example, here, paying attention to the call and the put interest is always a great thing to do when trading after earnings. OK, um, there's been a lot of times where I've seen people have been loaded up on calls. OK, and there's been no put buying, but then it actually drops. Right. So you don't want to overweight the importance of this little thing here, this little confirmation. But let's say you're short of the stock and you see everybody else is short of it and they're buying tons of puts. Well, that's just a good confirmation for you. Right. So uh, don't overweight it, like I said. But remember, just use it as a little confirming factor. And so, for example, today on BlackRock, everybody was buying puts. I mean, you had 2000 contracts being bought on the 740 strike and over here on the call side, you had 78 contracts being purchased, 200. I mean, you had 10 times more puts being bought. Um, there's a whole nother rabbit hole to jump down with put to call ratios and stuff. We're not going to do that in this video. But anyways, we're going to get to our conclusion. Okay, but before we get into the conclusion, we're going to get into the most important part of the video. So for some reason, what we've been going over hasn't been making sense. Well, now we're going to show you something that should make sense. Okay, so here's last earnings report. Um, back on the 13th of what is that October and what does Citigroup do it drops what does JP Morgan do it drops what does Goldman Sachs do it drops what does Wells Fargo do it drops what does Bank of America do it drops okay so all bank stocks sold off last quarter and well we're not we're pretty much expecting the exact same this quarter um, what you'll notice this time around though is that we are actually surging higher going into the earnings report and they're all super super bullish whereas last time there's still bearish trend here right but guys listen closely this is the important part to understand here although we were bearish trend before and we are bullish trend now what is the same about this is the fact that we are at the top end of the uptrend and we were at the top end of the bearish trend. Either way, that shows you you've got limited upside with a lot more downside. And those are always the trades you want to be taking, the ones that give you a higher weighted scale to a particular direction. Because what that's going to do is make sure, first off, you minimize your risk while also maximizing your profit potential. And that's what trading's about. OK, so at the end of the day, I know personally I can take that loss and understanding that we've done our calculations, we've backed up our trade. And, you know, we're not just trading off the news. We're not trading off of our emotions. We've got actual stats to back us up here. By the way, look at this, actually. Um, if you want me to send this to your email or if you want to take a screenshot of this, here's some data you might want to get from the previous bank reactions, which is nice to have. You can clearly see who dropped more, who who did what, right? Um, and you can also see that Goldman Sachs was the only bank that did not have bearish continuation into the following days. And Wells Fargo actually had a five-day bearish continuation. So just keep that in mind, guys. This is good stuff here. And I want you to take advantage of it. You know, it takes forever to put a, a you know video like this, collecting the data, putting these slides together for you guys. So I'd appreciate it if you drop a like on the video. But it's pretty clear where my bias is. You guys see, I want to short these. Um, and it makes sense logically, statistically. It makes sense in every way possible. And so if you have any objections, though, I'd love to hear it. Um, but remember, and you know, this chart of BlackRock was so bullish yesterday. But what happened? We nailed it. We called the reversal. 
that's exactly what happened. And so a lot of people right now might feel so bullish and they might think, oh, good earnings, let me buy. But remember, that's not always the case. Um, and this is a case of uh, profit taking within institutions. Um, and that's what we see being the, you know, the clear pattern and institutional behavior for these bank stocks this quarter. So we're going to take advantage of that um, clearly on that side. I'm going to be shorting these tomorrow um, unless circumstances drastically change like some crazy, amazing blowout earnings, right? So remember, this DTR that we've calculated is the DTR um, of the day of earnings. So this is actually excluding the pre-market. So this is the real DTR. Pay attention to the DTR. Um, this is what you want to be looking at. So um, for example, let's run through an example here. Uh, Citigroup, right? Let's say currently Citigroup's at 69. Ooh, lucky number. Um, and let's say it jumps up to 71.5. Well, what's the DTR on the stock? It's 2.5. Okay, so if it hits 2.5 DTR within the first 30 minutes, you know that it's unlikely to sustain that trajectory higher. And so this is where you see a lot of beginner traders fall into the trap. They think, oh my God, good earnings announcement and it's shooting higher at the open. I'm going to buy calls. And then they already, you know, by the time they get in calls, it's actually setting its top, it's hit the max DTR, and boom, it falls. Now, one last thing about this DTR, guys, keep in mind here, okay, that this DTR is based off the last earnings reaction. So, for example, Citigroup DTR 2.5, well, where was Citigroup last earnings report? It was at $45, right? Now it's at $69, okay? So it's a big difference. So I would actually add about a point or two to these DTRs here. So the point is, which that's actually really good for us. That means we get to make more money on a larger size move to the downside. Um, but just keep that in mind that this earnings uh, DTR is calculated only on the last earnings report. So I would really just bump that up um, your expectations here actually a little so that's good and um, yeah guys that's the plan and last thing I want to point out guys um, I know it might seem overwhelming so much information but trust me this video could have been like 50 minutes long I really cut it down and try to make things concise I never try to waste your time okay so the last thing I want to point out here is FRC you saw how bullish this was actually at the open I mean this thing popped higher okay and then it dropped so remember we've done all the analysis here and we know how much greater our chances are to the downside so when you see things tomorrow morning as they could be bullish um, they might look great remember it's likely to pop higher and then drop okay kind of like we saw with FRC or it could just be like BlackRock where it just completely gaps down um, but for this reason right because we don't know if it's gonna gap down or up yet this is why I didn't make the video in advance to tell you if we're gonna front run it we're gonna play it safe we're gonna play it tomorrow the day of earnings so guys Hopefully you found this video useful, and I really hope you come back with uh, you know your profits. You let me know how you do. Um, you can send in your trading um, results here uh, to trading on Fridays at protonmail.com, and um, that's how you can enter into our trading contest. Um, in our trading contest, guys, you can either win three hundred dollars cash, or you can get our trading course for free. And I currently got Leo the Lion in the lead, and then you got Shay. Um, in second place, you got Seth OG the, the in third place, and then you got Brad here in fourth place. So guys, as a small channel, you got a very good chance to win. You got not many people to compete with. Imagine we had a million subscribers. You'd have to compete with like 500 people here. It's like four of us. Okay, so take advantage. Um, you know, send in um, how we were able to help you take that trade. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, that's going to be a great way to end off the week if we have a bunch of guys um, who profit on this tomorrow. I mean, that's the whole goal of this video is to help you profit on this and make a bunch of money on it tomorrow. So don't let me down, guys. Um, ultimately, I got to not let myself down and make sure I nail this train in the first place. Um, but I expect you to nail it with me, assuming we're correct, right? So, so guys, hopefully you picked up on some cool tricks. You learned something or, you know, got something out of this that's going to help you trade these bank stocks tomorrow. Um, and, and, you know, this is just the surface um, I really can't make these videos too long, otherwise it's going to probably be a detriment to our YouTube growth, right? So i got to keep things as short as I uh, possibly can usually. And so if you want to learn more in detail, right, this is like surface level basic stuff that I went over in this video. You want to learn more, obviously we got the link below where you can learn all that. And that's going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope to see more guys enter our trading contest. You know, it's free. It's easy to win because you don't have much competition, um, although we've got some studs up here. Um, but, you know, that's besides the point. Try your best either way. And uh, guys, I will see you on the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.